Hello all, this is Dr. Day Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I wanna to talk to you about the biggest trick to be accepted by a PhD program. So if you don't know me, I'm an associate professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There were so many people that helped me out that I wanted to pay the favor forward and help you out. All right, so I had a question from one of the followers. So Ram uh, is, is Sereni Vas, sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, and he asks, uh, what is more important for being accepted into the PhD program, uh, getting your, your GRE, GMAT scores, GPA, letter of reference, or research fit for a doctoral program? So first of all, if I answer your question, on this program. You have to go out and do something nice within the next hour just to a random person and, and put comments below in terms of what you did so everybody else can see that you're doing some really wonderful and, and awesome things, right? So that's the name of the game with the Reciprocity Project. And it's more for you than it is for me to do that. Um, so honestly, in terms of you know a direct answer, it is diff so, so first of all, what I'm going to do is, is offer a trick at the end that I think you will really like. Um, but answering this question, it's a really difficult question to, to answer. Um, all of these are really important for a PhD program, and most of them are going to be looking at that. And the reason is, is that the pool of candidates just gets really good um for you know at that level that that people generally have pretty good gmats um they you know they are interested in research uh you know that they they have good gpas and stuff and that's the reason so we have this kind of what's called endogeneity behind it that people that are interested and they already have sort of a good all-around scores and all that kind of stuff that um, they're all kind of competing with each other and it's really difficult to sort of disentangle those each independently um, that being said, uh, so this is not the trick yet, but there'll be a trick soon. Uh, that being said, if I get a letter of reference from somebody that I know and I trust uh, about a candidate, so it's somebody that, you know, a letter of reference from, from somebody that is really well known in the field, in the research field, in any domain, you know, it's a Nobel laureate, for example, that is giving the letter of reference. It's going to be really, really hard not to look at that candidate and take them seriously, no matter what their kind of scores are and stuff like that, right? So that letter of reference holds a lot of weight. Um, and the other thing is, particularly if I, if I am, uh, you know, I know them personally, I'm going to feel obligated to really give that person a shot based on that letter of recommendation, right? So um, if it comes from somebody that I don't know and you know, it's just kind of a random person that you're, you're doing. Yeah, it's not going to have that much influence, honestly. It's really not. It's just, I don't know them. And so I'm going to discount them because those letter references can be gamed pretty easily in terms of you're just pulling from a selection of people that are going to give you a good letter anyways, right? Um, so, so just have that in mind. So you have to look for somebody that has influence. And if they do have influence, it's going to matter um, tremendously. Now, the the other thing I would point out, research fit is really important. Um, if you took the time to read what, what we wrote and you say something about what we wrote, that is, you really like what I've done um, or you don't like what I've done and could be improved, right? That there is some improvement that's being done. I'm going to take you very seriously. Any candidate that is willing to do that is 99% better than every other candidate that's out there. Most people are never going to do that. And they're all just going to be like, um, you know, they're, they're just going to sort of give you a, a sort of blanket um, letter of a, you know, a statement of interest that is just kind of, yeah, I really want to do this just because, I don't know, I'd like to teach or I like to do research or whatever. You know, it's, it's if somebody took the time to seriously read that, and I wish I would have known this and had this advice, um, that's going to be really cool. Now, uh, here is a trick to get pretty much automatically accepted uh, at most really top tier PhD programs. Um, or it's going to give you a really significant shot. So this is really important. Pay attention to this. If you really, really want to impress um, anybody in a doctoral program, in any professor in a doctoral program, write an actual 10-page paper about their research and come up with a custom spin 
about that particular research, right? And and hand that in as part of what you're doing, right? So so I do learning from failure in organizations, right? So write something that is interesting about learning from failure in organizations that, that people have not done. Actually take the time, spend a month, two months going through and writing that, that paper. Golly, you're gonna really impress me um, as well as other people that are around. And so you probably would want to do that sparingly um, in terms of who you want to impress because that's hugely resource intensive. Um, and, and that's going to cost you a lot, right? So if you have, if you really want to go to NYU, for example, and there's somebody at NYU you really like, write a paper about their research and, and give it to them in terms of the package and say, I really loved what you did. And, you know, I spent um, hours and hours and hours going through your research and I came up with this kind of interesting insight. If you did that, I'm going to be really, really rooting for you, um, for your acceptance. And it's going to be just really impressive because nobody does that. And that is just going above and beyond what everybody else is doing. And, it, and even if your scores are kind of relatively low, if your paper kind of makes sense, um, I'm going to really give you a shot. And that's how people get into programs around the world um, from, from different schools, from different re regions. They pair up with somebody and they say, that, I really love your research. Um, you know, I've, I've written this thing. I just don't know what to do with it. Can you give me a hand with it? Uh, and that's really how a lot of this stuff does. And it works. And that's and a lot of times you'll see senior faculty pairing up with junior faculty. And that's what's happened is that they, they've reached out once they've developed a paper and they gave it to the senior faculty and the senior faculty said, mm, eh, that's all right. That's kind of cool. Um, let's give it a shot. And, and so that's the trick. And I guarantee it, it is going to really work. Um, it's going to give you, I would say, a 75% chance compared to, you know, a 25% a chance of just going in cold. So uh, hopefully you like this trick. And in RAM, make sure you go out and do something really, um, really nice to somebody in the next hour and uh, put it down in the comments below. And anybody else has watched this video too and it's helpful please go out and do that as well. That would be really cool. All right, so uh, take care, have a wonderful day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.